let's talk a little bit about the cowl. The cowl extends back to almost a former F2. It ends right here. Most of it is in the open engine bay area and then a little bit does come over top the sheeting on the top and the sides. And this is true to the real airplane. The real airplane, it looks like the cowl actually does kind of capture the sheeting. Um, I can't tell if there's anything here on the real airplane or not. I've not seen any photos of that. So this is the way I want to try to attack it. I want to make a blue foam plug for the area forward of the firewall in this open area down here. I also want to add some clear packing tape to the sheeted areas, top and sides, and then fiberglass this whole thing. If I've applied a good release agent, hopefully that whole thing will just pop off. If not, I'll maybe have to just dig out the blue foam a little bit. So, for starters, I have some blue foam I have cut out for the engine box. And this first one has been relieved for the gussets. And these just slide on. They're a really snug fit to the engine box. They do sit flush with the uh, former F1. So I'll, it takes three to fill up to the motor mount engine box. So what I want to do is glue these three together, but not to the airframe, just glue these three pieces together. When that glue dries, pop the whole thing off and then add remaining blue foam to fill up or fill out to the uh, spinner. So for the cow, I had the basic shape roughed out, just the top and then the sides. Haven't really done anything with the bottom yet. And then after I did that, I used some tracing paper, traced the side view, and that's where I've gotten the line here to trim to. And I did the same with the top. This is really about all I have to work with, this and photos. So for the top, I've got my laser level lined up all the way back to the tail. And I'll, this and this cutout here is uh, where the intake cutouts will go. So I'll mark this and shape this down. Uh, it, it matches up right about here. Now, one thing I'll have to add, I haven't done it yet, is to add a circular ring for the spinner. And I'm going to actually glue that to this uh, foam after I've shaped this. I can probably mark it out now as a reference. The bottom of the cow has been roughly shaped to the cut line. I need to fine tune it a little bit more. But before I do that, I added a water-based sanding sealer to the bottom and to the front. That helps to fill the pores. It actually makes it a little bit easier to sand, especially when you're trying to fine tune to a line. So I let this dry, and then I wanna start working on the cutouts for the intakes. The plans call for a four inch spinner. And so I've taken the back plate of the spinner and I have traced it onto some 5mm light ply. I'm using this because I just had some scrap. And then I cut out the circle with a circle cutter. And I've marked the location of the back plate. 
The plans do not show what I would call a spinner ring. It's the rounded part of the, of the cowl that matches up with the spinner. I'm not sure why, maybe for simplicity's sake, but I want to add that. So that's why I cut out this 5mm uh, plywood. I want to glue it on to the blue foam and then I can incorporate the rest of the shaping in with this uh, ply uh, spinner ring. Now I've also brought forward some of the lines from my traced out pieces. And this area right here ends up being the cutout for the intake. But the airplane really has more of a skinny rectangle going across and not so much a square as this kind of appears to be so this may be because of the way the plans are drawn for making it a little bit simpler for the modeler but i'll i'll see what i can do to make it look as as scale as possible the forward cowl has now been sanded down to the line right along the top of the back plate and now I've marked in the area where this part gets rounded down along the cowl. I think it starts back here where it starts to taper to the front so that's where I've marked the line. Now I need to sand these outer edges down to this line and I believe this represents the top of the intake openings. Before refining this shape even more and smoothing it out, I'm gonna add some sanding sealer here. It'll help firm up the foam and make finer uh, shaping a little bit easier. And while that part's drying, I'm gonna flip it over and start working on the bottom. Well, the bottom, I'm not really sure exactly how the bottom is shaped. Looking at pictures of the real airplane, there is a, a continuation of the cowl ring from the spinner and it appears to sort of taper back. But right about here, I can't see what's really going on because in a real airplane, there is also a circular intake right about here. So I really can't see what's going on back here. Now I will not be including that circular intake scoop. Uh, if I do, it will be a separate fiberglass part, which I would glue on. So I'm gonna make the assumption that this fairing starts the width of the spinner and then it just kind of goes back to a taper at the center. Bottom's been roughed out. Just like at the top, I'm gonna to go in now and give it a coat of water-based sanding sealer. Help smooth out the foam before I go in and start fine-tuning it. I think I'm pretty happy with it so far. So, I've got the sanding sealer on, it's drying, it's mostly dry now. But before I knock off for the day, I wanna add some epoxy micro balloons around this cowl ring. This actually has a little bit of a radius to it from the from the ring down to the sheet metal. So I'm going to add some epoxy micro balloons that I can sand uh, to a radius. I'm using a two hour pot life epoxy. So I got a lot of working time. I'm just going to start dumping in some micro balloons until I get a nice consistency.
All right, that right there is a good consistency. It, I can put a big blob of it on the stick. And it pretty much stays there, so that's what I'm gonna use. Now I'm going to take a spatula dipped in alcohol to smooth it out some. Alcohol prevents the epoxy mix from sticking to the spatula. The micro balloon epoxy mix has been sanded back. It's uh, probably about 95% done. I really can't see what other um, sanding and shaping I need to do until I can get a coat of primer on and that'll help really show any areas that need some more attention. So I think uh, this part for now is done and now to finish shaping up the cowl, I need to round over the sides and then I need to work on the intake openings. So this is what I'm starting with on the bottom side. And this is kind of what I've come up with. Looking at the photos, this appears a little bit sharp and then at the back it's quite sharp. The cowl actually ends up where this uh, yellow tape ends. So this right here will be a sharp edge. And then so I've kind of rounded this off a little bit to kind of blend into the sharp edge. And the sides from the photos, this appears to really be kind of rounded. So it's sharp, rounded, and then sort of sharp again. Shaping the top sides is gonna be a little bit trickier than the bottom. The plans show and the photos kind of confirm it that as the cow reaches its forward part, it sort of slopes inward a little bit. That's what these lines here represent. And I brought them down along the front. There's also um, a lip. This is what represents the intake cutout. There's a little bit of a lip along the top and then a larger lip along the bottom. So that's where that marked out. That's marked out and then the hatched area is what I want to cut out for the intake. But as mentioned before, the this kind of gives it sort of a box shape. Whereas the real airplane, it's really more of a longer rectangular shape. So I want to try to maintain that rectangular shape. I think it looks pretty good. So I may cheat and not curve this one in as much as the plans show. What I'll have to do is do a little bit of shaping on the sides, smoothing out these hard edges right here, rounding those over a little bit, and at the same time kind of playing around with the intake and hope I can meet somewhere in a happy medium. I've got pretty much everything shaped now except for the intake holes. What I'm going to do is uh, give everything a another coat of sanding sealer and let that dry while I think about how I'm going to tackle these intakes. Three coats of sanding sealer, which have all been sanded back. Plug feels really smooth. Well, 
except for all the little depressions in it. But I believe the foam is fully sealed now, so it can accept the high build primer. I'll be using an automotive lacquer primer for that. That's why it's important to have the foam sealed. For the intakes, I decided to smooth them out and fiberglass over top of them. And then after the cowl is completely done and the blue foam is removed, then come in, cut out the intakes, and then line the intakes with some balsa, which can be rounded over to simulate the real thing. In the next video, we fiberglass the plug.